Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In this video series, we're going to demonstrate how easy it is to create your own navigation system within Swift UI to allow you to switch between different views. And the bonus is that this solution can be used as a starting point for any app. Our navigation system is going to be circular menu button that when tapped, expands to display options for different views. If this is something you want to learn, well, keep watching. Before we dive into the code, let me show you what we're going to build. Here's our completed application. We see that there is a floating navigation button on the bottom of the screen, and we're showing the first view of our application. When the button is tapped, the button shrinks slightly and then expands to display five buttons in total, and the background view is disabled. Tapping on any one of the buttons will present a different view. The first example is only showing different text views, but the views can be anything, and you can customize the number of buttons to be anywhere from 2 to 5, and each with its own unique icon from the SF symbols and its own color. Here in our second example, we're only showing three views. The views like this home view can have a navigation bar, but as you see, the views can be anything, including a list view. Returning to the home view, tapping on the push button on the navigation bar pushes to another view on the navigation stack, but our floating button is still there. So now it's time to build our application. Start by creating a single view application. Let me expand the screen, and I'm going to call mine Circle Button Navigation, and make sure that it's Swift UI, and I'll just save it to my desktop. Let me choose the iPhone 11 for my preview canvas, and the first thing I'm going to do is create our floating button. This is a circle, so I'll replace text view here with circle view, and I'll fill it with a blue color. I'll reduce the size by setting a frame of 65 wide by 65 high, and I'll overlay an image onto the circle and I'll use a system image from SF Symbols, and that one I'm going to choose is just one called one.circle.fill. I also want it to be white, so I'll choose a foreground color of dot white. Now this needs to be at the bottom of the screen and above any other views that may be in the background. So we need to introduce a Z stack with the view that you want to display in the background being on the top of the Z stack. So there's no embed Z stack option, so I'll just choose embed in V stack and change V stack to Z stack like this, or Z stack. I'll add a text view as my background view as a sample, so just text hello world. But we see that it's directly behind the circle. We need to push the circle down to the bottom and we can do that by embedding this whole circle in a VStack itself and then putting a spacer above the circle to push it down. Let me change my preview to the new iPhone SE. To me it appears that the button is too close to the bottom so I want to add an offset to the circle to move it up. I think a Y offset of minus 10 will do. As I return to my iPhone 11 preview, it still looks good. Now when I tap on the button, I want to be able to do a couple of things. I want to disable the background, shrink the button in size slightly, and expand out all the other buttons, which we'll build shortly, which will be actually behind this one. To disable the background, I use a technique of embedding the button within a Z stack and that Z stack having a black background color set to an opacity of about 0.2. So let's do that. I'll embed the V stack in an H stack this time and change H stack to Z stack. So now I can add a black color as the background and I'll set the opacity at 0.2 so that I can see behind it. We see, however, that it doesn't extend to all edges, and this would be particularly a problem if our background view was itself embedded in a navigation view. So we need to set it to ignore all safe area edges. Now we only want this to be shown when our button is tapped. 
So for this, I'll create a state variable called isActivated, and I'll set the default value to false. Now we need some way to toggle our isActivated, and that is done by adding an onTap gesture to the circle that when tapped, toggles isActivated. With that in place, I can now change the opacity of my background based on whether or not the button is activated. So we'll use the ternary operator on our opacity. So if is activated, it'll be 0 0.2, otherwise 0. And great because is activated by default is false, and we see our opacity is then set to 0, and our background is clearly visible and therefore enabled for touch if necessary. You might notice, however, that our button has dropped down to the bottom again because our background is ignoring safe area. I can fix this by using another ternary operator on the edges to only do horizontal when it's not activated. The other thing I mentioned is that I want our button to shrink slightly when it is activated. Enter that ternary operator again to adjust our frame. So when it's activated, both our width and our height will be 50. Otherwise, it'll be the larger 65. Let's test. Now this is pretty jerky. It's immediate, and I want to add an animation to smooth that transition. And I want that transition to apply to the entire view, including the setting of the opacity. So I'll add that animation to the entire Z stack, and I'll use a spring animation. Previewing this looks exactly how I want it for now. So let me just align my code, and I'm going to move the animation down to the bottom, as that makes more sense to me because it's applying to the entire view. So far, so good. We have our primary select button working. Of course, we need to add more buttons and we'll be able to change our views from hello world to whatever we want to display. But this circle is going to be the basis for all of our menu buttons. So what I want to do before I finish this video is extract the circle into a separate sub view called selected menu button. This results in an error because we're using is activated, which is our state variable in our content view. And selected menu button is no longer inside content view. So we solve this by creating a binding to is activated. And we'll pass that binding from our content view in when we present the selected menu button. Well, that fixes the problem. It's working just as it was before. So now we can move selected menu button into a file of its own. So I'll cut it out of here. And I'm going to create a new file and I'll just call it menu button instead of selected menu button because I'm going to use the same file to create our other menu buttons as well and I want to keep them together. So I'll paste the selected menu button into this file and we'll need to change import foundation to import Swift UI. One last test, and we see that it's working just fine. In the next video, we'll start taking a look at how we can create a model and a view model for our menu buttons, and we'll discuss how we can fan out our buttons and how to lay them out. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.